Hello, my name is James McKee. I'm an archaeologist working with Archaeological Management Solutions. And for Heritage Week, I will be talking about the archaeological discoveries made on the N16 road project in County Sligo in 2020. I will be discussing the project in general and will focus on two sites, an early Neolithic house and an Iron Age palisaded enclosure. The two and a half kilometre long project was located in the northeast of the county and about two and a half kilometres east of Sligo town. The project began at the western entrance of the Glen Ciar Lach Valley and skirted around the lower western slopes of Copes Mountain. It ran from the town land of Drumkill Skellia to Lugnagall. The topography is mostly gently undulating, with some steep slopes, a prominent hill at Castle Gall townland, and several small streams. The underlying bedrock of the region is chiefly limestone and shale, and land use is mostly pasture with some mature woodland. The flat coastal area to the northeast runs down to Drumcliff Estuary. The project was situated in a very scenic location around the western slopes of Copes Mountain with views of the Ox Mountains, Sligo Town, Sligo Bay, Drum Cliff Bay and Estuary, Knocknaray with Queen Maeve's grave on top, Drum Cliff Bay and Coastal Area, Ben Bulbin and Kings Mountain at the entrance to Glen Ciar. The region is steeped in myth and is particularly associated with Queen Maeve, legendary Queen of Connacht and one of the main characters in the epic Tonbo Calinia. She is celebrated as both Queen and Goddess and according to legend is buried in the stone cairn on top of Nach overlooking the surrounding territory. Tales of Finn McCool and the Fianna are also set in this landscape. According to legend, they ride out of King's Mountain every night, across from Cliff, and on to Knock Naray. W.B. Yeats, who spent time here as a child, was greatly inspired by these stories, setting a number of poems in the area, and choosing to be buried at Drum Cliff. Sligo is of course well known for its wealth of archaeological heritage, with famous sites such as the Passage Tomb Cemeteries of Carrowmore and Carrowkeel, to name but a few. The area around the project contained a number of known monuments, including court tombs, wedge tombs, ring barrows and ring forts. Here we see a ring barrow in Castle Gall townland. A total of 15 sites were identified and excavated along the course of the road route as shown here. Each site was given a number and named after the townland in which they were found. The sites included prehistoric remains such as a possible Neolithic house, groups of pits, possible cremations, burnt spreads, three ring ditches and an Iron Age palisade enclosure. Later sites included a brick kiln, a 19th century stone cottage and a pottery kiln.
Two of the ring ditches discovered are shown here. Castle Gall 2 consisted of a ring ditch 7 metres across and pits. A fill from the ring ditch produced chert and one of the external pits contained a shard of early Neolithic pottery. The ring ditch at Castle Gall 3 was 7.5 metres across and was radiocarbon dated to the Middle Bronze Age 1669 1508 BC. The much larger ring ditch, partially excavated at Lugatopra 3, produced bone, chert tools such as the scraper shown here, and beautiful ceramic and glass beads. At Drumkill Salia 2, towards the southern end of the project, a cluster of features including pits, stack holes and post holes were found. Prehistoric pottery, chert tools and burnt bone were found in some of the pits. One shard of pottery was decorated and came from the rim of a vase food vessel dating to the early Bronze Age, about 2000 BC. I'm now going to focus on the first of two very significant sites discovered on the project. Lugatober 4 was the remains of a possible early Neolithic house found towards the northern end of the project. Quite a few features were revealed in the townland of Lugatober, including groups of pits, hearths and a ring ditch. The site was found at the foot of Copes Mountain. It was situated on a well-drained northeast facing slope and close to an old water source. The site afforded access to the level ground towards Drumcliff Estuary and enjoyed views of Kings Mountain and Ben Bulban. Here we see the excavation and recording underway, along with one of the post holes and a cooking pit. The shallow features on the site consisted of linear wall foundation trenches, post holes and pits, including at least one cooking pit. Four corner post holes, the foundation trenches and the remaining structural features formed a rectangular shape measuring 6 metres long by 4 metres wide, subdivided into two internal spaces by a partition wall trench at the northern end. This layout is highly suggestive of an early Neolithic house. The site plan has much in common with other early Neolithic houses found throughout Ireland and here we can compare it with similar examples. We can immediately see how close and loud they are. These houses were built by early farmers during the Neolithic housing boom between 3715 and 3625 BC, which also coincided with increased forest clearance for farming. Here we see some reconstructions of early Neolithic houses. They are rectangular in shape, timber built with split planks and wattling, with wooden posts supporting the walls on a pitched thatched roof. These were impressive buildings requiring great effort, skills and resources. Vines included a quartz core, which is a significant discovery as quartz appears to have played a symbolic role in Neolithic life. Quartz was of course used at the passage tomb at Newgrange and is often found in ritual contexts. For example, a votive hoard of quartz cones was found buried at the early Neolithic Causewed enclosure discovered at Maharabai, just south of Sligo Town. This 6,000 year old site is the oldest of its type found in Ireland and Britain and dates to the very beginning of farming here. 
It may well be that the people who lived in the Lugatober house travelled to this communal monument. I was lucky enough to work on the Maharabai dig and it's hard not to feel a connection with these people and imagine that I may have walked in their footsteps. The discovery of stone beads also provides a poignant link with the person who wore them as a necklace or some other form of personal decoration. An important discovery from the site was that of sherds of carinated pots. An important discovery from the site was that of sherds of carinated pots. These bowls were the earliest type of pot used in Ireland and appeared with the first farmers at the beginning of the Neolithic age, 6,000 years ago. Storage and cooking pots are important in an agricultural economy and it helps us trace the spread of farming across the landscape. Fragments of burnt clay used in open fire pottery kilns to control heat were also found. These rarely discovered objects tell us that pots were being made and fired close to the house and stone tools were also found within the features of the house. Here we find two chert artefacts. Chert is commonly available in the area for tool making and large amount of chert artefacts have been found recently at Glen Carlach, just two and a half kilometres to the northeast. Four rubbing stones were recovered from the house and were an essential part of farming life for pounding and grinding foodstuffs, including corn for flour to make bread, the Neolithic staple. Rubbing stones were used with quern stones and together these held an important symbolic significance. Some of these rubbing stones were found in the wall foundations of the house and must have been placed there during construction as token offerings. Indeed, most of the artefacts came from the northern gable wall foundation, indicating its symbolic importance. Here we see a very fine flint plano convex knife, which was also found in the northern gable wall. This flint tool was the pen knife of the Neolithic farmer, who no doubt would have carried it everywhere. It too was seen as a fitting votive offering. This is the northern gable wall foundation before it was excavated, showing the charcoal rich fill, scorched clay and packing stones, and the flint knife when it was found there. A common feature of many Neolithic houses is that they appear to have been deliberately burned down in a ceremonial act of decommissioning. This practice of domicide is seen throughout Ireland, Britain, Europe and the Middle East. The fact that all the features in the Lugatober house contained a lot of charcoal suggests that this occurred here too, giving us a possible idea of how the house ended its days. While we await radiocarbon dates for the structure, we cannot be sure of its date. However, the evidence all seems to point to it being an early Neolithic house. If this turns out to be the case, then this will be the first to be discovered in Sligo, and so making it the oldest house found in the county. This discovery will make an important contribution to our understanding of life and society during the age of the first farmers in the region. A geophysical survey, as shown here, carried out after the dig, in the field to the west of the site detected more possible structures indicating that the Lugatober house may have been part of a larger settlement as seen at other early Neolithic sites. We we'll now travel through time from about 4000 BC to the Iron Age around 250 BC 
to the site of the palisaded enclosure at Castle Gall 4. The site was found roughly in the centre of the road project. It was situated at a spectacular location close to the top of a hill on the lower western slope of Copes Mountain. It was strategically placed with incredible views of Sligo Bay and the coastal and upland regions. Its position at the entrance to Glen Carr would have dominated the local landscape, allowing control of access routes to the north and east. Here we see a plan and drone photo of the site after it had been excavated and recorded. It consists of a circular palisade foundation trench enclosing an area about 20 metres across. There was an entranceway at the southwest and a pair of post holes inside the entrance. Also inside the palisaded enclosure was a circular arrangement of post holes surrounding a stone lined hearth with cobbling, stake holes and further post holes at the south side of the post circle. More post holes, cobbled areas and fire pits were found within the enclosure. A cluster of pits Linear slots and a large curvilinear feature were found to the northeast of the enclosure. Early Neolithic pottery found here may indicate that these features belonged to a much older phase of activity at the site. The site was also cut across by a modern field boundary and drain. Here is the site about halfway through the excavation and we can see holes in the palisade foundation trench. These sockets indicate that the palisade was constructed with over 200 upright wooden posts. Analysis of charcoal samples from some of these post sockets indicate that oak posts were used. Measurement of the post sockets showed that the posts were about 15 centimetres in diameter and were secured in the trench with a clay and stone packing fill to create a strong and impressive structure. The entranceway was almost two metres wide and bounded on each side by post holes, with the one on the right being much larger than all the others. The entrance was also cobbled, which led to a pair of post holes within the enclosure. This image gives us a rough idea of how the palisade may have looked to someone entering it. And this reconstruction gives us an impression of how it may have appeared in the landscape. A circle of roughly equidistant post holes was found within the enclosure, indicating the presence of a timber circle or building. Here we see one of the post holes with stone packing on the oval hearth found within the circle of post holes. Post holes, stake holes and cobbling shown here at the south side of the post hole circle may be the remains of an entranceway to the structure. Here we see a reconstruction of the site shown with the roundhouse inside it and images of what it may have looked like if the post hole circle is interpreted as a building. The post holes can also be interpreted as an open ceremonial timber circle. Finds include two possible quern stones, one of which is shown here. They were found among the packing stones of the Palisade Trench, 
and may have been placed there as votive foundation deposits. Used for grinding corn for flour, it was interesting to learn that emmer wheat grains have been recovered from some of the samples, giving us an idea of the type of crops grown at the time. Also discovered in the Palisade Trench was a broken rubbing stone, which may have been deliberately broken and also placed in the foundation as a suitable ritual offering. The two possible quarren stones were found roughly at the north and south points of the Palisade, the rubbing stone at the east and with the entrance roughly at the west. This may evidence a religious concern with the cardinal points. Another artefact recovered from the foundation trench was a fragment of a flint blade. This too may have been a foundation deposit and may have come from the possible Neolithic features at the northeast of the site. During the excavation, it was noted that a lot of charcoal was present in the Palisade and internal post holes and features. Fragments of charred posts were found and many upper packing stones were scorched as shown here. This raises the possibility that the site was deliberately destroyed by fire and like at Lugatober 4, this may have been done as a deliberate ritual act of decommissioning. Evidence for ritual burning has been observed at other Iron Age sites including Awan Maha, the Royal Capital of Ancient Ulster and Armagh, where a huge oak temple or timber circle was filled with stone, burned and covered with a mound of soil. There are also parallels with the other ancient royal sites. Here we see a stretch of the large palisaded enclosure with post holes excavated at Rathnari at Tara. And on the right is another large palisaded enclosure, first detected in a geophysical survey of Dunalia in Kildare. Here we see an excavated example with internal circular post hole structures from Bez Rath in Kiltiani. Castle Gal 4 is just one of four palisaded enclosures recently discovered in Sligo. Here we see two found during the N4 road upgrade in the south of the county. They are remarkably similar in layout and point to the importance of this area during the Iron Age. They no doubt provided important communal and ceremonial centres. We look forward to the results of post-excavation analysis of finds and samples from Castle Yal 4 to flesh out the story. This palisaded enclosure has an important contribution to make to our understanding of life and beliefs in the Iron Age. The discoveries made on the N16 have again highlighted the importance of Sligo in the ancient times. These findings can only enhance its reputation as a centre of archaeology and heritage. I hope you have enjoyed this Heritage Week talk. Thank you very much and stay safe.